Hello everybody, I wanted to give a quick tutorial on how I litter my comics. I actually use Photoshop to litter my comics, where a lot of professionals use Illustrator. So, uh, there's my phone. <laughs> um, so I'm going to give you guys a quick tutorial on how I do it. Uh, I've already got my script and my Photoshop open and my art. My art's actually finished. Um, and uh, I saved my lettering for last. But for this uh, video, I'm going to go ahead and turn all these things off so that you can just get some line art. And, uh, well, you've seen a little bit of both now. Anyway, so I've got my script open on my right side. And uh, for those who are uh, extremely beginners in Photoshop, uh, I'll give you a quick look at my layers here. Uh, I've got my background here, which is just white, and my ink all the way up here. And I've got my ink layer on multiply. It's going to start on normal. But I've got it on multiply so that when I turn on everything underneath that layer, my ink's on top and nothing interferes with it. Except for my glow layer that I like to add some atmospheric lighting that uh, you know affects with some of the values of the ink. Like if I zoom in now, that's no longer black. You know, it's being affected by that light. But that's all advanced stuff. I'll discuss that at another time. So, uh, so I'm going to bring my cursor all the way up to the top. Uh, my layer all the way up to the top. I'm going to pick my top uh, script line out of the script. I'm going to highlight it, hit Control C to copy it, and our first panel's on the left here. And uh, she, the dog, just asked the guy if he's been divorced. <laughs> it's a really kind of awkward conversation, and uh, his response is, uh, "Yeah, I am." So uh, the T, hit the T key to put in text. And I drew a box. I know I just went kind of fast there. Let me do that over again. I drew a box where I roughly want it to go. Um, and then I hit Control V to paste in my script. Now I'm going to rearrange this because uh, you know you want it to be in a little tight balloon, not go too wide or too tall. And this is just an approximation. I don't care about color covering the leaves at this point. I'm just sort of approximating my conversation. That's going to start right there. Um, Molly responds, "That sucks." So I'm going to put that in next. Um, I'm using Anime Ace as a font. And my point is at 7 points right now. Uh, and this page is at 7 by 10 and a half, which is just basically right around what most printers use, give or take a quarter inch or so. So at 7 and a half by 10, I've got my font at 7 points. Now that's what it works for Anime Ace, but it might not work for whatever font you're using. But I've used this font for almost a decade, and with my experience with printers, seven points is about as small as you should go. If somebody's muttering something under their breath and you want the readers to zoom in or, you know, look closely and see what they're saying, you can maybe go to a six, but you really want to stay close to seven and make sure you do not dip into eight, nine, or ten unless you want your character screaming or really emphasizing or something like that. So I'm not going to do the whole book because uh, that's long form. I wanted to keep this short. Um, I'm going to give it does a break and start the next sentence after it. Um, Got to make sure that words don't cut off like something. Got to make sure the, that it doesn't get cut in half. And uh, that looks fine. Try to keep things looking sort of like they belong in a bubble or just an organized box. And the way I do uh, bubbles is a little bit different. It's, I don't like perfectly round speech bubbles is just sort of a preference thing. Uh, all right, so next, text, yeah, why is that you cheat on her or something? Make sure that question mark gets in there, there we go. That looks fine, not too picky. You'll see why in a second when I draw my <laughs> my boxes, my uh, t text balloons. Last one for the panel, no, but I still feel guilty. I wasn't in love with her anymore. I'm going to put no by itself up top because it's got some emphasis. Usually you can separate, you know, when people write their scripts, they put a big sentence, you know, multiple sentences together. You can actually uh, break these up into different bubbles if you want. Like I could put no in a different bubble. I still feel guilty in another, and then I wasn't in love with her anymore in another one after that. Um, and it, you sort of control the pace in which people read. Um, I might put no on a different box now because it feels sort of organic. Like, imagine he's getting hung up on that word, right? Like, no. 
but I still feel guilty. You know, so you're controlling the way people read. Um, it's your story, and you don't have to worry about prose or words like he paused. So you have to get pretend you're writing prose, and you have to say he sighs or he pro. You know, he paused between. You know, you'd have to write that in a book, but with word balloons, you can. You can do that visually. All right, so that's it for that panel. I can go on and do the rest, but it's, that's sort of redundant. Um, so the next step is I'm going to go back down to the bottom of my panel here and um, start a new layer. And uh, Sorry, got distracted there. Uh, start a new layer, and I'm going to call it bubble. Keep your layers labeled. I know I don't have them all labeled, but most of them I do. Background, color, light, ink, stuff like that. Just try to keep yourself as organized as possible. I actually don't use a lot of layers. I'm, I'm pretty much a minimalist. That's might look like a lot to you, and it won't look like enough to some people. But Anyway, so I'm going to name it bubble, and then here's the only real tricky part. I'm going to add a stroke to it. You hit the little FX button at the bottom, and I'm going to add a stroke. It's a graphics, oops, sorry about that. That's a graphics design term for outline, basically. Uh, five pixels is good, and I'm going to keep it black. Um, and I actually like the position to be on the outside. That means it's going to add pixels to the outside of the thing you draw, not on the inside or center. And you can experiment with that if you want. Now. If you want to use circles, you can just use this marquee tool here on the top left and draw yourself an ellipse like that. And then, you know, Control and Delete will fill that bubble with this color, and then Alt and Delete will fill it with this color, I believe. Yeah. So I'm just going to fill it in there. I have a speech bubble. Now I'll go ahead and do them as circles for now, just because I rarely do it, and I kind of want to see what it looks like. And I'll show you how I do it, because it's more fun to me. And I'm not claiming it. It's not that original. I kind of got it from Manga, to be honest. Now, see, now it's not quite going to work. It's going to maybe rub a little bit. And now my this this particular block of speech is a bit square, and now i got to draw a circle to make it fit. I don't know, man. I just don't like circles around my text. It looks okay. It looks old school. It looks classic, traditional. Now these two touch, and that's fine, because he's saying both things. Um, normal, 100%. There we go. All right, so, uh, so I'm going to do this. OK, sorry. <laughs> so you can draw, and as long as I'm in this layer, drawing is all going to have a stroke around it. So you can draw your own tails and stuff in this layer and you can just draw with your uh, stylus your if you're that good with the mouse then good for you oop that wasn't him saying that so let's goes that way and then meow 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 that way now there's a there's a theory behind bubbles that you need to solidify who's talking right away so in actuality I should do this so that from the first bubble, I'll know immediately who's talking. Now, there's a lot of things working for me here, like they're standing left to right. They're the only two people in the scene. And from the context of the previous scenes, you should know really who's saying what. So that's not really essential as much. It, Like I said, it is kind of a little hidden rule in comicking. But this scene is so obvious, I think, and the, you know, the text being left right, that I shouldn't maybe have to do that, all right? So that's that's basically how I do it. Use a marquee for the bubble, for this for the perfectly round shape, and then I draw in the connecting lines and the tails. Now I'll show you how I do it because I think it's more fun, and like I said, it's got that manga influence. I actually draw like a rough polygonal mess around each one that maybe fits the dialogue better the shape of the dialogue. Um, quick aside, make sure you've got plenty of space between the, uh, the edge of the bubble and your text. You do not want them touching. Uh, I'm going to move this down because that was too close for my 
tastes. All right, pretty quick. I uh, I don't really mess around. This is the fastest part for me. It's not that fancy, uh, but nobody's ever complained. Nobody, not, none of my books have been hard to read, and nobody said, "Hey, those look kind of messy. You should do that in Illustrator." Nobody's ever told me that. And I've been doing this for ten years, so I fooled them all. And I'm just using my eraser to clean this up, maybe bridge these two. And then uh, because they're jagged, I'm going to jag I'm gonna keep these connecting lines a little jagged too. Right. Kind of cool, kind of stylish, lets my brain be a little more, you know, involved instead of just circle here, circle there, blah. Now you can use the lasso tool to do your, if you don't have a stylus at home or a pen, you can use a lasso tool to do your your tails. A uh, polygon one works too, if you want to keep it nice and straight lines. You know, looks pretty good too. Um, but uh, when you're doing a, a brush, make sure that you're, you're just using raw pixels. It's not one of these special brushes because then it starts to look like that, you know, with the jagged edges. Uh, let me just do this one because I know it's insane. You know, that looks like crap. Actually looks kind of cool. <laughs> but anyway, make sure you're using just a raw pixel brush with no effects, no softness. If it's soft at all, it's going to look really dumb and amateur. Uh, last thing, maybe pick pick a font for sure that's in all caps. Don't do lowercase, you know, don't do Arial, especially. And don't do anything with lowercase. It just looks, that looks, ugh, oh my god. <laughs> It looks so amateur and awful. Don't do it. Find a nice, classy, handwritten font that looks good in all caps and easily readable. Don't go too stylized. Reading comics is supposed to be a, you know, about clarity and and uh, not slowing people down and making it easier to read. All right. So that's what that panel looks like. Mostly done. Now I'm gonna go back because this page has been done. Let's see how close I am to what I actually did. Yeah, it's pretty close, right? Looks like I kept all that in one big chunk and the the client was fine with that. All right? So there we go. That's basically it. Uh, if you have any questions, hit up the comments and uh, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Thanks, guys.